Welcome back, Theme Park the Wizard. And we have a special guest that's so special. He comes on all the time. This is Chris Orange Go 55. How are What's you? Going? Well, I'm doing good. How are you doing, Ethan? Fantastic. Now, there's some crazy stuff going on. I think people are a little too bored because they keep starting petitions. <laughs> or they just hate Disneyland, one of the two, because, <laughs> yeah, as you know, the Disneyland petition adds to reopen it later has, um, you know, obviously gained a lot of steam, see. <laughs> but, but see, the one thing I don't like when they gain a lot of steam is that when some national headline like CNN picks it up, they, the, the he they, I mean, they're, they're not theme park experts, right? So when CNN and all these other things, they, they, they pick up something because it's popular, but the headline is always very misleading. And every time I've seen that on, on Facebook or whatever, scrolling, Disneyland fans want Disneyland to reopen later, it always seems like a misleading thing. So I feel like it will, you know, then it gets to the general public. Then like, oh, what? Oh my gosh, what? And I feel like, you know, it is really misleading. But what do you think about this reopening later stuff? Yeah, I did a I did a video yesterday with uh with the general with Vash Sky yesterday and we talked about this and and I mentioned like okay, first of all, <laughs> they're not even reopening for another month. So the situation is gonna be completely different in a month, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean at what point like you have to end the lockdowns eventually. I mean you can't just have this going on for an indefinite amount of time. You know, we know enough about the virus now where we know <clears throat> the certain risk factors, the certain risk groups, you know, we know how it spreads, we know how contagious it is. So let's open up and adapt to what we know about the virus. I mean, we do the same thing with other viruses. We do the same thing with the flu. We do the same thing with AIDS. We do the same thing with every other virus. We, we, our society continues and we just learn to adapt to it. And we have to do the same thing with COVID-19. Even with a vaccine, even if they get a vaccine tomorrow, it's not going to completely eradicate the, the virus. We still have, we have a vaccine for the flu and 60,000 people a year die from the flu. So you're never going to get to a point where it's completely gone. Reopen it, reopen Disneyland, have the social distancing, wear the masks, and it's fine. I, I don't get... The, 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 I don't understand the problem here, you know? <laughs> now, why do you think people didn't uh, complain when a Disney World announced their opening date? That's interesting. Uh, you know what? The only thing I could think of is I think politically here in California, I think maybe people or activists feel that California, there's a better chance of, of kind of getting them to change their mind. In Florida, they have um, Ron DeSantis, which is a, a Republican, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he hasn't really been too keen on the lockdowns. He's been more, more lenient. Um, we have Governor Newsom out here in California, who is more of a Democrat, who has been very aggressive with the lockdown. So maybe people feel like Newsom is somebody that, can, that they can actually make some, some headway with, you know, like if they complain enough. That he'll actually listen, where DeSantis is kind of like, you know what, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Because I mean, <laughs> Universal Orlando, you know, they reopened without any kind of problems or anything, and seem to be doing pretty well over there. And uh, but even here in a uh, Hollywood City Walk reopened, and there was no one saying delay that, or I guess the theme park didn't announce it reopened, so maybe we have to see there. But even when the uh, you know when when uh, Sea World and um, the San Diego parks and then yeah the article the the Magic Mountain and Universal they made their uh, reopening presentation for July first and it came out but still no one seemed to care too much I'm like wow I guess because uh, they don't care as much about those places but wow they're they should be feeling pretty lucky Universal's probably like good yes good I like our fan base. <laughs> We, they're just kind of slipping on the radar or not as they're not as passionate as Disney so you know we can we don't have to face all these all this flack yeah Disney I mean if 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 any executives from Disney are listening 
um, my advice to you is do what you got to do. You know, you guys know the situation on the ground. You're talking to the governor. You're talking to the, the elected officials. You know the protocols that you're going to put in place for the reopen. Do what you feel is right. Open when you feel it's right. You know, don't, don't, don't like submit to people's complaints because really like the average person doesn't know the situation as much as mm-hmm. as you do like disney know like they talk to governor newsom all the time you know yeah, he's on the of, task force isn't he? yeah he's on the task force bob Iger's on the task force <laughs> they, they, they communicate all the time so i hope disney doesn't buckle to public pressure you know they seem like they're being very careful very cautious it's limited capacity. You got to wear a mask. You know, they're going to do social distancing, probably a lot of virtual cues. They're doing everything right. There's no reason why we have to delay the opening any more than it is already. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and it's, the opening isn't even happening for like another month anyway. <laughs> yeah. People act like they're going to open tomorrow. Like it's another <laughs> month. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very interesting because, yeah. I'm- I, I made a post about him, of course. No. <laughs> oh, about maybe uh, half the comments were, "Oh, but these are these aren't just regular people; these are cast members that are signing the thing." So, so it's okay because these are cast members. So, what are you not understanding? I'm like, oh well, you know, I don't understand how Disney World's cast members don't seem to care as much, right. or, <laughs> or Universal's team members don't seem to care as much as uh, oh, here in Anaheim, I don't know what makes them a little bit different. Especially because Florida is the worst case wise than here in California. So right. they, don't, they still don't seem to make any big deal about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Ethan. And you know what? Here's the thing too, is like if there's cast members out there that are that are that are seriously concerned about being exposed to coronavirus, <laughs> right? And they work for the Disneyland Resort, the best advice I can give them is talk to your management team and say, Hey, you know what? I am a high risk. I, I, I'm high risk, you know, I have this, this, and this medical condition, you know, or I'm, I'm older, let's say there's older cast members that are over 60, over 65, you know, for those people that are, that are more high risk that work at Disneyland, talk to your management and they can work with you. I think it's even in their union agreement or whatever they, that they, that they have, the Disney has to accommodate them. So those people can, can, can work something out. But to but to delay the opening even more than it already is, I think it's kind of ridiculous. I think it's kind of ridiculous, honestly. Um, yeah, and that's a good point because my grandfather, he's almost 80, but he, he's an electrician. He still works, or he yeah. was still working at LAUSD. But, uh, and they closed for a little bit, but then all the younger people went back to work. But um, LAUSD, like, forced them not to go back because they know he's 80. So I feel like Disney, they might do the same uh, ordeal. They know someone like 80 or 70. They're not, I'm sure they're not going to be, be the first one to drag them back to work knowing they're yeah. high risk. Because, I mean, but yeah, the as LAUSD and other companies are they're all going slowly going back to work with a modified thing. So I feel like, you know, theme parks also a business, so they also can, they can't just sit there and not make money for more months, you know. I'm sure that itching to get back, and um, you know, yeah, and I'm sure, and also they, I'm sure they won't employ the entire twenty-three, thirty thousand member cast member force like right away. You know, probably like Shanghai. You know, you open up a, a little bit of a time, a little, little. Exactly. You know, I'm sure not everyone's coming to work at the same time, so they still got time to to figure stuff out. Yeah, like wow, but um. But yeah, it's very interesting how, and how, like you said, you and another one in one of your videos, you mentioned, <laughs> if you don't open now, when do you reopen? You know, like right. because after vaccine or with the vaccine, there's still there's people who anti-vaccine people who probably won't get it, so it's still out there. So at that point, you just might well never reopen. <laughs> Right, exactly. I mean, th- you know, that, and that's the issue I have with these people that are very, very hesitant to reopen. When is it acceptable to reopen? Because there's never going to be, I mean, the CDC is even talking about this might be like a seasonal thing with coronavirus. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if that's the case, is Disneyland supposed to shut its doors for six months out of the year, every year now, because of coronavirus is a seasonal thing? Like, at what point do you say, okay, as a society, we have to open up and just adapt to it? You know, I mean, I, I don't understand it. I, I really don't get it. You know, I mean, I understand the lockdowns back in March. We didn't know a lot about the virus. Okay, so shut it down until we understand more. <laughs> But we understand a lot now. We, we know a lot more now than we did back in March. And um, we know enough to open up the, the parks and to adapt to it. And, you know, Disney, I, I, I have confidence in Disney. They're, they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're definitely going to enforce the mask wearing and the social distancing. And I think if we all do that, I think it's going to be okay. I, I don't get the problem. Yeah, it seems to be going well. Like in Shanghai, I still don't have any – I still don't hear about any things in Shanghai. Now – what do you think about this other petition <laughs> that about two days before the uh, Disneyland one to rethink Splash Mountain, the Princess and the Frog? Um. Okay. So, Princess and the Frog is a, an incredible movie, gorgeous movie, and I, I'm personally I love the Disney fairy tale. Those are my those are my favorite animated kind of animated movies, right? Mm-hmm. So I think Princess and the Frog deserves more than a rethink. I think if we're going to do a Princess and the Frog attraction, build it from the ground up, you know, make a whole new ride for Princess and the Frog. That, that franchise, that movie deserves that. I, it deserves more than just an overlay or a retheme. Splash Mountain, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, that they, they left all the racist elements out of the attraction, and it's mostly just the animals. Um, you know, they don't have like the more problematic aspects um in that attraction so i don't really understand the issue um you know the ride's been out for i don't even know how long was it 1989 it opened yeah 1989 so it's been over 30 years <laughs> like that and no one's ever complained before I, I i don't know i mean you know if there are problematic elements in the ride that that, that people of color find offensive then disney can go in there and sort of address those issues like kind of like surgically and remove them like they did with the parts of the Caribbean with the, with the, with the selling of the wenches scene and things like that. But just to completely take away the theme and replace it, I, I think it's kind of unnecessary. You know, what, what, what do you think, Ethan? What, what, what's your feeling on this? Oh yes, I agree. I, uh, one, uh, yeah, I don't see any racist elements in there. Um, <laughs> And most people, I mean, like most people I talk to, these, unless I tell them, they don't even know what movie it's based off of. So they right. don't even know it's based off a racist movie. Exactly. Um, my friends didn't even think it was based off a movie until I said, oh, no, it's based off this thing called Song of the South. It was <laughs> way back when. Said, oh, because I mean, I saw just animals also. You know, right. It's one of my favorite rides at a whole resort, you know, you just can't take away that music. It's too no. good. Um, but the whole thing, there's, yeah, there's not one human in there, just a whole bunch of animals dancing around, and then Briar Rabbit being a bad boy <laughs> until he gets caught. And I think it's actually a pretty, it's a pretty happy ride. There's not any sad parts. It really puts a smile on all my friends' faces, and I have friends of all different types of races, and they haven't said any, said not even knowing, not knowing comes from moving, they haven't said, oh, that's so racist. Like, they never said that. So I feel like there's definitely no racist elements. <laughs> and a question, the petition, again, again, specifically mentioned Disneyland Splash Mount. What about, did they, did, did they inadvertently forget about Disney World in Tokyo's, or is that not yeah. included, or is it just Disneyland? Like, what does the petition really cover? Right, and, 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 and I think that goes again to, 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 to political leverage. I think people feel that because California is a very, very blue state, that, they have, that, 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 the, that the politicians in California are more open to addressing it. You know, you're not going to have that same kind of openness in Florida with, with, with I mean, they have, a, they have more Republicans in that state, you know, with, with, with um, Ron DeSantis and what have you. So I feel like they feel that the, the only chance they really have to doing this is through California because it is more of a left-leaning, more progressive state. But 
I mean, yeah, I, I just think that if there are problematic elements in the ride, you address those elements. You don't completely change out the theme. Um, I, I think it's just kind of, it's just kind of over going overboard a little bit, you know? Yes. Where, where is the limit on the, the petition? What's the line for when people can say, oh, this is what a real petition should be? And what are all these fake ones or crazy ones? Yeah. Well, and then it's like, you know, I, I was talking to, on my video last night with Vash, that guy, um, and he was saying, he made a great point. Like, where, yeah, like, like you said, where do you, where do you stop? Because the architecture for the Haunted Mansion is very Southern. Mm -hmm. So should we get rid of that? You know, is that kind of, can that be construed as, as problematic? Um, you have a lot of things in here, um, you know, in Disney parks that are like, very colonial and things like that like mm -hmm. do you remove all of that what about tom sawyer's island like it, there's just so much like where do you draw the line where where do where does this end you know mm. where does this end you know and i think disney has done a good job in removing problematic elements in this park they've done a lot of work in splash mountain i mean um uh pirates they, they've done they've removed things that that are that are socially no longer acceptable which is great but uh the rides now that we're going after I, I just don't see it. I, I just don't mm -hmm. see the, the issue. I really don't. And just imagine, if you did remove all those things, you have to take away the entire lands because they're all based off those things. So then you'd, get, you'd lose the iconic original Disneyland Park for something that will probably put like Avatar up in there and something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that would be, then people will really made it. So then you, you just can't make anyone happy. So you're, it's, yeah. I feel like it's a small group of people. Because usually when people don't say anything, that means they're okay with it. But when the small group of people start saying something, they can make it the louder voice because the people that uh, don't care will still like not even pay attention to it so they won't sign they won't share they won't they would even make a counter petition like i tried to because <laughs> because they were they're like oh this is they're crazy so then <laughs> it just seems like there's one voice with, with there's millions of pass holders that i'm sure really don't mind <laughs> yeah and and this isn't splash mountain is not a new attraction I mean, this attraction has been out since, like I said, like 1989 here in California. Yeah, it's not like they just thought of it during the protest. Oh, wait, let's make a, make a new ride based on a racist movie right <laughs> now. Let's build it. Like, no, it's been here for like 30 years. Also, what I, what I, um, I'm telling you something because some of my family members asked me about it. It's made on CNN. I was like, hm, oh, they won't do that. You know how much it takes to retheme a ride? They had to pause nine hundred million dollars in construction projects. So even if they wanted to, whether they do the research and development and construction, there wouldn't be a new rethemed splash round for like two years anyway. And then by then, mm. people forget about. It. Right. Exactly. That's a great point, Ethan. That's a great point. Now I do want to give credit to uh, a buddy of mine, um, Nothing But Disney. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, and he and he brought up a great point to me the other day, and I thought this was actually a great idea. I think I think what he okay, so basically what his idea is is take the the Song of the South characters, so Brer Rabbit, Brer Bear, Brer Fox, you know, all the car mm -hmm. all the characters that basically appear in Splash Mountain, and give them their own like animated show or series on Disney Plus, and obviously the new series would not be problematic, would obviously mm -hmm. not be racist. So when people go on Splash Mountain, they associate it with that new show instead of Song of the South. And I thought that was a great idea. You know, you can kind of like redirect the attention, you know, reimagine what these characters mean. And I think that, mm -hmm. I think that, that, that has potential. And shout out to nothing but Disney for that because that, that was actually a great idea, I think. You know, yeah, I like that because I've always wanted to. I feel like I mean, I think they're hilarious the characters in there. So to see them on their own show would be pretty. I think it'll be pretty fun and pretty good. Like in from the new animation style. And yeah, it doesn't have to be anywhere in the. It doesn't have to be in the south. It could be in a. It's animated, so it can be in a Toontown for all we you know. It could be in a brand exactly. new world, and same characters, same names, but then. They're just going on their own adventures and 
nothing to do with the Louisiana or New Orleans or black people or white people. Which, <laughs> you know, just the whole tune word. I didn't have, and Disney Plus, they seem to need some original content. So that'd be that's a win win for them. Disney, listen up. <laughs> yeah, it's a win win, and and it, and it sort of re um it, it kind of gives those characters a new image and a new you're you're kind of um kind of rebranding that and so mm-hmm. that way future generations associate the attraction with this new show or new series and this new direction of the characters instead of having to go back to the old movie which is more racially uh you know problematic you know yeah like man and i don't know how the let's see i don't know, i think the splash mountain one kind of died out because i haven't seen it recently being talked about after what a week so that was a quick change of a oh because the app went to the Disneyland reopening thing so yeah a quick change up we need we just start our own petition so just distraction everybody else from that well well you started the the save Paw Patrol right oh yes save Paw Patrol <laughs> now that's the show we got to save <laughs> whether cops are good or bad you got to save the Paw Patrol kids have nothing to watch otherwise you wake up and the kids have nothing to watch. You know, back in my day, we had, which was only 10 or 15 years ago, we had Spongebob. And, you know, Spongebob did a lot of crazy things. Some could be racist. Some could be just outlandish. But it was funny and no one cared. You know, if Spongebob had those old episodes today, I feel like people would be so upset. Oh, oh, definitely. We live in a very different world right now. Like like a show, for example, a show like Animaniacs that came out in the 90s. Mm-hmm. There is, and they're going to reboot that show. Um, and I'm excited for it, but I, I just don't know how they're going to do it. Because that show today, if you watch those episodes today, it, it's like, ooh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of like... Um, issues like with me too and things like <laughs> that like objectifying women and things you know there are a lot of things that are not okay now that were more Oof. acceptable back in the 90s so yeah it's a different we live in a different world now than we did you know it's a very very different world a much more politically correct environment yeah because like even in i think oh, in the spongebob movie <laughs> at one point passion was just as like a, a prostitute but it's like <laughs> if you had that now no way. You have some parents be like, what? What, is the, what are you showing my children? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked that Warner Brothers went through with the with those new Leech cartoons because they're extremely violent. And I, I'm shocked that they even they even went there with it. You know? Oh, and I yeah. love the new cartoons. I mean, I, I love the new the new cartoons. I think they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. But in this environment, I got I mean, I gotta give I mean, I gotta give credit to Warner Brothers for for putting for even trying because that's pretty. I mean, they already took away the guy's gun. Isn't is that like a staple of Elmer? Oh like, yeah, they that. took away his gun, but that's, then they gave him a machete them... though. So it's like, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> that's even more violent. <laughs> that's funny. Oh man, you know, <laughs> and it's not that I don't agree with all these uh the c- c- culture. But I do agree. I believe that no. You got to have some places where, you know, you can't just cancel everything, you know, you know, you can <laughs> yeah. still like, for example, <laughs> Elmer, he can still have his gun. But uh, if you're smart enough, like, I mean, <laughs> when I was young, I played Grand Theft Auto and a violent people would be like, oh, that's too violent. And my mom would be like, oh, he's not going to grow up to go killing people and i haven't killed anyone nor do i own a gun so i mean if you play these things or watch things responsibly like you know if you just don't let it influence you to kill someone or get a gun i know you know i you should be able to be allowed you know? I, I agree and it all comes down to parenting you know like i grew up also on looney tunes and a lot of violent cartoons like transformers and he-man and all this stuff <laughs> And I, I, I'm a, I'm a decent human being. I, I don't, I don't like, I like you. I don't own a gun. I'm not violent. It all comes down to your parents, you know. Mm. And it's just how your parents raise you, you know. And uh, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, like they took away the Paw Patrol because there's one, there's one dog cop on there. I mean, they're all kind of 
Oh, well, there's a fireman and there's something. There's other all these types of things. There's one of them. One's a cop, so they had to take it away because they're being a good cop. I mean, <laughs> I'm black, but I'm I'm not saying there's no all no good cops. I mean, there's there's all good and bad cops. But I definitely never don't say don't canceling shows because of it. At least the, the animated cartoon, um, right. <laughs> the cop show. And I watch. I I like cops. It's a cool show. The cop show, you know. It was, <laughs> and it was interesting to see it from the cops' perspective. Um, I assume, I assume they, those are mostly real, right? The episodes oh. of cops. They were, oh yeah, like, those are definitely real. Scripted. Yeah, <laughs> because. I mean, everyone they arrested had something was wrong. So I mean, they didn't do any, uh, you know, they didn't do any uh, shady business. Yeah, shady. They didn't throw some weed in the back of the guy's car. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was already hot. So I think, you know, I understand the point, but you know, you can't uh, can't forget there's good and bad of everything. Exactly. Exactly. It's like it's like it's like doctors. You know, how many, how many headlines have you seen with doctors where the doctor, you know, was performing plastic, plastic surgery, but, 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 but didn't do it correctly. And the, and the patient ended up dying on the table or, <laughs> or a doctor was practicing without the proper license or whatever. And it costs lives, you know, malpractice is what they call it. Malpractice. <laughs> how many times have you seen that? But like, do we, do we cancel all doctors? Do we say all <laughs> surgeons are bad? Of course not. You know, you just have to, you have to look at it through like a nuanced perspective and be like, yeah, you know what? There's a lot of messed up people in this world that should be held accountable. And that's in every profession, you know? And, but there's also a lot of good people that do a lot of good work, you know? So, you know, you just have to kind of like address the bad while understanding there are also some good, you know? Yeah. Cause look, if we canceled everything, then <laughs> It would be pretty boring out there. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, I'm just looking at the Incredicos behind me here, and I'm thinking, wow, we just canceled every Disney ride, every type of crazy stuff. It would be the rides would be terrible. <laughs> It'd all be like Goofy Sky School, and right? We exactly. Want all that? Like, wow. Um, <laughs> but honestly, I think outside of frontier, outside of that whole area, I don't think. There's any other Disney ride that's like has bad elements? Uh, maybe does Roger Rabbit have no? I think that's no. A- I mean, Roger Rabbit. The only thing that people could really get Roger Rabbit on is how sexualized Jessica that's is. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's pretty sexual. I mean, she's pretty. You know, I mean, it goes without saying. Um, also, Baby Herman is a baby, but he smokes a cigar, and maybe people will have issues with that. But um. I don't know. Yeah, I think out of Roger Rabbit, I think Jessica would probably be the biggest issue for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But luckily, no one said anything yet. Oh, I hope I didn't give anyone an idea. Yeah. Uh-oh, <laughs> a petition's going to pop up. <laughs> Remove Roger Rabbit cartoon spin. The description. I was watching Theme Park Wizard's video, and he said, what other rides are bad? And I popped in my mind, Jessica Rabbit. She need they to reduce her. Reduce her uh, torso area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> New animatronics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, Orange County, as you probably saw, California, <laughs> made due to death threats and to a council member's house, <laughs> made mask wearing optional. I'm sure Disney won't, oh, they'll enforce it. But now that Disney kind of, I guess, has the option to. Do you even think they'll potentially make it optional due to whatever backlash they got in Disney World for it? I'm not going to wear a mask in this high heat and humidity, or do you think they'll just do cool down zones? <laughs> like in Disney World, we can take it off to go to a specific area and take off your mask for five minutes and then breathe and then keep walking. Yeah, I, I think they'll do the cool down zones. I think Disney is playing it really safe legally, mm-hmm. and they're not going to they're not gonna open themselves up to any undue um problems and and legal potential legal ramifications if disney goes in there and be as, and is like oh yeah you don't have to wear a mask and then there ends up being an outbreak and it's linked to a the, you know a disney park they're gonna have a lot of problems so i think they're gonna definitely have a very strict mask wearing policy i'm all for reopening the economy i'm all for reopening disneyland but i'm also all for wearing a mask 
It's the easiest mm-hmm. solution in the world. You just wear a mask. It's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wish the parks would open like next week and we could just all wear a mask and I'd be fine with that, you know? Yeah, the mask, no problem. And plus it's a good, like, it's a cool fashion statement. You can, you can rock mm-hmm. a cool mask, you know, it's something new. Um, but yeah, I have no problem with it. And I think Disney should stick with it. At least, the mask wearing, at least for a little while, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe through like, you know, December or something when things mm-hmm. really kind of calm down and then they can kind of, you know, make them optional. But uh, yeah, I don't think that, uh, I don't think Disney's going to go that route. I think they're going to be really, really um, strict on that mask wearing and they should be. Yeah, I agree. And I still don't know why uh, <laughs> the mask wearing seems to be uh, like a political statement now. You wear a mask, you're, you're, you're like a Democrat, you know. <laughs> You don't see a Republican. You can't just, if you wear a mask, you're just trying to be healthy and safe and go with the flow. Right. I don't understand why you're like a bad person if you wear a mask and you're a bad person if you don't. You know, you got to kind of separate the politics from the thing because it's just an accessory. It's just a thing to put on to help everyone be safe, no matter who, you know what you side you believe, what, you know, who you believe in or what side you're on. To help to keep you from not dying potentially. Right, exactly. And they're not asking you to wear like this massive, like, you know, gas mask, this plastic yeah. monstrosity <laughs> over your face in the heat. You know, a lot of these things are like, they're just, they're just, they're like t shirt material. Mm. It's not a big deal to wear one. They're not that bad. I go, I go on a walk. I work from home, but I go on a walk every single day on my lunch for an hour. And it's hot out here in California, and I wear my mask, and I'm it, yeah, it's a little sweaty, but so what? I I can deal with it. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's not like you know I'm like dying in it or anything. I mean, it's it's just not a big ask to to just to have people wear wear these masks. I don't think. Yeah, it's not like no, they're also yeah, you're right. They're not forcing you to wear a certain type of mask. It's not like saying bring an N95 or else you can't get in the park. <laughs> you can make a T-shirt covering or a scarf. I was at City Walk last week. I wore my mask, and the day I went, well, they, they opened Wednesday, and it just happened to be pretty hot. Are you you live in the valley? You know, it's like 100 something that day. Oh, yeah. And I was hot. there at 2, 2 p.m. There's people there. Everyone was wearing masks. No one's complaining. They didn't have misters. It wasn't even that like hot. It didn't feel hotter than it was if it was if I were to take off my mask. I even did I took off my mask and put it back on. It's like it feels like it's the same temperature. Yeah. So it wasn't even like a, a thing. Yeah, it's not it's not a big deal. It really isn't. Like I today I, I went to the uh, I went to the gas station. Um I wore my mask. I went in there. I got my gas. I came out. You know, it wasn't a big deal. I wore my mask. It, it didn't affect me at all. And, um, I, yeah, I don't really understand the, the pushback on the mask wearing. I, I really, really don't. Yeah. You know, maybe it's because the rest of the world, they're used to kind of being told what to do so they can just follow <laughs> directions. <laughs> Here, I guess we're not so used to being told what to do. It's being a lockdown, stay inside, right. wear a mask. So it sounds like, almost like a teenager, a group of teenagers, that are kind of like revolting, like, no, right. mom, I'm not going to wear a mask or stay inside. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I feel like that's a type of culture we have going on. It is, yeah. It, it, well, it definitely is cultural. Like, in Japan, if you look at, the, like, the, um, if you, if you look at images from Japan or video from Japan for years and years and years, you'll see a lot of the people that go to um, Tokyo Disney and stuff, they're wearing masks and it was long before coronavirus you know mm-hmm. it's like a cultural thing they, they just they wear masks and um out here in the united states we're not used to that you know it's very very different for us so we uh yeah we we we, we like to push back a little bit <laughs> but and lastly on this reservation system for disneyland <laughs> so like, uh, you know they pause all the new ticket sales <laughs> so how long do you think those will be like pause how long do you think it'll be until someone can't buy a new annual pass or ticket um i would guess just a couple of months i don't think they're gonna you know disney at the end of the day is a business and they want to make money you know Mm -hmm. i don't think they're gonna they're gonna they're not gonna drag that out for longer than they have to so 
they'll open up in July and then they'll, they'll restrict the annual passes and the renewals and all that probably till September, maybe October. And then things will start to normalize again. You know, like I said, Disney has to make money and especially in Anaheim, they make a lot of money on annual passes and um, mm-hmm. they're not going to leave that money on the table for very long. They're, they're just not, you know? So uh, yeah, I, I, I would guess by the fall, they're going to start loosening that up a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. Because um, once they get through the backlog of everyone trying to get in uh, with the pre-existing tickets and the, uh, all the passwords want to come in, so they can come for two months. So once they get through all of that, I feel like then they will start to allow people to buy stuff again because then the initial rush will be over, and then there'll be there'll be space for new people. Yeah, exactly. Now I wonder what's going to happen though with this reservation system. So everyone needs to make a reservation, but like if you have an annual pass and you pay like fifteen hundred dollars a year for unlimited access, it's kind of a bummer to have to make it. <laughs> yeah. And then you get denied. So you're not even getting what you're promised when you buy your pass. So I, I just don't know how Disney's gonna really I don't know how they're gonna work that. Cause like why why am I even paying fifteen hundred dollars a um a year for an annual pass when I can just spend you know, money on the flex pass and have essentially the same rights. I don't know. Oh, yeah, the reservation. Yeah. Yeah, I don't (laughs) don't get it, but we'll see. Maybe there'll be like different tiers. Maybe, you know, signature pass holders will get like priority in terms of the reservation system or whatever. It could be that, but we'll see. Well, if you don't mind me asking, Ethan, what kind of pass do you have or do you not have one right now? So so I have a plan. I said, because I love this little SoCal resident thing. It's so, what a, it's a great deal. So I got the SoCal resident three-day ticket. I have one day left on that. Um, and then I was going to get myself a flex pass. So I guess I still, well, the plan is still in action. Because whenever they open up, or not, whenever, whenever I get a re- reservation, I'm going to use that one day. Then I'm probably going to get a flex pass. I always usually get the signature ones, though. Then I was like, wow, a flex pass I get almost the same amount of days as the signature one and i just have to make a reservation that's not too bad and i save half of the, the money so i'm like you know I'll, i'm gonna downgrade the signature because like you said because most of those because uh get a lot of the benefits of the signature pass without the parking and they just have to make a reservation which i don't mind doing so um i think definitely a flex pass yeah which one uh when when yours expires are you gonna renew yours or go to oh yeah no, I'll renew mine. I, I've had a pass uh, for such a long time. I got, I got, I got my pass in February of two thousand and three. Wow, that's oh, a yeah. seventeen year continuing uh, pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm a veteran, and so I'm going to continue doing it, obviously, because I love going. Um, but you know, to give you a little insight, it's funny. The pass I have now mm-hmm. used to be called the premium pass. And when I first got it, it was like three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I was gonna ask, us, how much was it in two thousand three? Wow, that's less than the SoCal Select. Yeah, dude, that's <laughs> like a, that's like a monthly payment now on the SoCal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's out of control now. You know, but um, yeah, it was only like three hundred and fifty bucks or something back then, and then it's progressively gone worse and worse. And then they got rid of the premium and they kind of rebranded it as a Signature Plus and the whole thing. Yeah. Arts, but uh. Yeah, I've had this pass. I've been a pass holder since 2003. It's It's been a long time. They should give you like a 30% discount for being a continuing pass holder without renewing your pass without letting it expire for 17 straight years. They, they should, should give those people, they should give like a grandfather discount. Or they should have like one special year, maybe like on the 20th anniversary of your pass like in 2023 you get the, the signature plus or signature pass for that 2003 prices so 350 dollars that'd be so cool oh that'd be great that'd be absolutely great <laughs> that'd hey, be JPEG, like, if you're watching this JPEG, if you're watching this make it happen man make it happen, JPEG, happen. yes <laughs> Mate, you gotta reward your longtime loyal members like mr orange grove over here <laughs> by, by getting them some nice like uh you know didn't they do like uh, oh like um yeah perks but um there's a i don't know if you remember it was was it last year <laughs> you know there's the show mrs my Mizel, my 
on Amazon Prime. And in LA, they had a Prime Day. I think it was last year. It was one one day last year before the season five premiere or something. And a lot of the restaurants in like the show and just participating in restaurants in LA were giving like 1959 prices. So like gas, one gas, this one station was 89 cents. And then there's just a line around on the freeway. It was, it was hilarious. It was wow. great. And I was like, wow, see, Disney should do something like that with your past. Give back to 2003 prices or 2000 prices. Exactly. Exactly. No, they absolutely should. They absolutely should. It's when, crazy. When, when, when I got, it's weird to think when I got my pass, California Adventure was only two years old. Two oh, years yeah. old. Wow. It looks very different back then. Oh, yeah. It was a different kind of park. <laughs> wow. Ooh, that's when was Bugs, oh, Bugs Land was around. That's when it was kind of new. That's very new. Actually. Yeah, it was pretty new. Um, everything was around. I mean, it was pretty much DCA. I mean, it was. It was DCA 1.0. There was no Tower of Terror. Ooh, weird. I mean, that's so weird, weird to think about. <laughs> yeah, there was no tower. I mean, it, definitely no Cars Land. There was definitely there. no Cars Land. <laughs> the old entrance with the Golden Gate Bridge. That's when the orange peel was on the uh, the swinging chairs thing. Yeah, <laughs> the orange peel. And one thing that I do miss about DCA 1.0 though is they used to have, and I, I used to have this really cool, like I think it was like every summer it was like the X Games. Oh yeah, um, the X things. I see yeah. pictures of that. That's pretty. That looks pretty cool. It was like a big stunt show. Yeah, it was fun. I did it like once or twice, and I watched them. And it, 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 basically, where Cars Land sits now, they <laughs> set up like this like arena with like these dirt hills and these ramps mm-hmm. and all this. And you would see like these guys do like um, motorcycle stunts off these dirt hills and and flip in the air and do all this. It was actually pretty cool. It was actually pretty cool. I mean, yes, I like Cars Land more. But I, I do kind of miss watching those. I think that was pretty fun. <laughs> Look at that. That area was always destined to be a motor type area. <laughs> it yeah, was exactly. Cars Land before there was even a Cars Land. The, yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. It was, it, well, and and before there was the car, before there was the X Games, there was the parking lot. So it was. Oh yeah, see that car. Always, city car. <laughs> <laughs> that area is like was a blessed with the Cars area right there. That, that's funny. Grizzly River runs like the only uh, remaining uh, normal. Oh no, sword. Oh no, not really. Kind of, I guess. Kind of. But, but yeah, Grizzly, Grizzly River runs the only thing that survived the original thing. They're like, all right, we messed up everywhere else but here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, Hollywood Land looks very, very similar to what it was before. I mean, missing a few things like Superstar Limo and um, like the ABC, like Bistro. <laughs> but for the most part, Hollywood Land looks pretty much the same. Um, Grizzly Peak looks exactly the same, except now the trees have grown in really nicely. It's even more. Oh, beautiful. yeah. Nice redwood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's even more pretty now than it was before. But um, yeah, we'll see. You know, we'll see. I'm just excited for Avengers Campus. Yes. And oh, and I don't know if you saw uh, Jack from DSNY's newscast, but it's, he did. I said it was 14 weeks left. Oh, yes. Yeah. 14 weeks from the closure to the July 18th opening day. So he figured the opening day would be like October, you know, based on 14 weeks from July 17th, which makes sense. You know, it's a makes sense. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I can see them doing that. You know, they, if they did, if they opened it up in October, that will get the holiday rush in there. Mm-hmm. And also, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Black Widow comes out in theaters like in November, so they can even yeah. promote it. And be like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, um, Black Widow, and you know, they can they can kind of cross tie it, you know, promote it. And I still think that they should, since Spider Man so far along, they should kind of they should open it up first, and then open the rest of it later on. Yeah, why not? Yeah, exactly. Open it up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if they like see people like not showing up, um, it will give them an incentive maybe to come along. Come show. Although I feel like Disney, I don't have a problem with people not showing up. Uh, yeah, I don't think it will either. I, I think it will be okay. I feel like the reservation <laughs> system of like Galaxy's Edge will you know, sit online, 
and like, oh, the computer will crash in like 30 seconds, so we'll all be gone for the first three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I think because we have a more localized fan base, it's going to be a lot a, a quicker recovery for Disneyland than it is for Florida. Because Florida, everything you have to plan out like months and months in advance. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in and, California, you, they have all these annual pass holders just waiting, just waiting on a drop of a hat to go mm-hmm. and, 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 and hit up the parks, you know? Can you imagine if you're a pass holder? Like, you know, there's several um, houses around this. So if you're a pass holder, and you can just, like, see, like, the Mickey's Fun Wheel or the Incredicoaster, like, from your backyard. And, like, I can't go there, but I can see it. Oh, <laughs> those people must be just itching to hop over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, well, that was always nice to have you on. Thanks for joining I'm talking about these crazy topics. I mm, can't believe all these petitions are here. But um, <laughs> thanks for coming on. You're always great to have on the channel. <laughs> well, thanks, Ethan. I appreciate you, bud. And you're always welcome on my channel. And uh, it, it, it's always a lot of fun coming on here and, and talking Disney with you. So I, I appreciate you you, uh, you inviting me. I... Of course. And everyone go subscribe to him. He's almost at 3,000. We got to get him Woo-hoo! so close. <laughs> <laughs> By, by September, we got to get that 3,000. So if all my 685 people go over there <laughs> and uh-huh. share it to your friends. And as always, have a fantastic day.